Hello, young traveler. It is I, the mystical wizard of the round table, Merlin. Behold our king, Arthur. Hey! I'm pretty sure that's not the right Arthur. No, that that's what he's supposed to be like. If you disagree, you can always speak with our second in command, Charles the Great. That's definitely not the right Charles. I'm actually good. Sure. Good afternoon, Jank Enthusiasts. I'm MBT, and this is 10 Minute Testing. <laughs> you thought we were done battling the boxers? Hardly. King Dempsey's got one more in him, and so does this deck. Hot off the post Cecil metagame, this series of dubiously true swordsmen are back to build boards and use smoke grenade to hand rip. And they're all out of smoke grenade. Presenting Infernoble. Hey! Whoa! So here's the list, which takes heavy inspiration from the Wasilla Alaska Regional. As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. But first, this video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck is the number one place to go if you need a pack simulator, a card database, or want to read a wealth of strategy articles. They also post breakdowns and lists from every major TCG and Master Duel tournament, including the Master Circuit Series. Give them a look at www.yGO. P R O D E C K dot com. With that, let's investigate Infernoble. Infernoble is a series of monsters that asks an interesting question. What if, after 16 waves of support for the TCG exclusive Noble Knights, we actually made them good? This deck is based on the French third of Arthurian legend and the real life king Charlemagne. Uh, side note, did you know that French museums claim to like have the real swords from the completely fake made up legends like on display at museums? Isn't that wild? Like imagine a kid learning about electricity and the water cycle and then taking a wrong turn and there's Ronald McDonald's first Big Mac just sitting there encrusted with jewels and there's a plaque next to it that says like Grimace wielded this in the first battle of Hamburglary. It's amazing. Anyway, I probably don't have to tell you much about these cards. They were previously very strong, wielding powerful equip spells like Durandal and, well, Smoke Grenade of the Thief to combo opponents to Kingdom Come. Of course, those days are long behind them. Without Smoke Grenade and Link Cross, this is just another deck that spins its wheels forever. Until now, Charlemagne is in a card game now, and this Link one can be made only by using a level 9 Infer Noble Knight Charles equipped with a spell card. This soft once per turn spell negate is a fantastic conclusion, alongside God Phoenix Gearfried and Apollosa, to a setup that's easily accessible, doesn't lose to much, and most importantly, can be done more than once. So with that, let's get into the card by card. First up, the Infer Noble Knights. We have three copies of Renowned, which if you control a Fire Warrior monster can be special summoned from the hand, and if summoned this way becomes a tuner. You can only special him once per turn this way, and if he's special summoned, you can target a Fire Warrior monster or an equip spell that's banished during your graveyard and add it to your hand. Two Ogier, while this card is an equipped card, the equipped monster can't be destroyed by card effects, and if normally special summoned, you can send a Noble Arms or Fire Warrior monster except himself from your deck to the graveyard. If it's in your graveyard, you can target a warrior you control and equip this card to that monster. One a piece of Infer Noble Knight Maugus, while this is an equipped card, the equipped monster can't be destroyed by battle, and if it's sent to the graveyard, you can shuffle into the deck three of your other Fire Warrior monsters or Noble Arms cards that are banished in your graveyard to draw a card. If in your graveyard, you can target a warrior you control and equip it. In for Noble Knight Turpin, while an equipped card, it can be treated as a tuner if used as synchro material, and if you control a monster equipped with an equipped card, you can special summon this card from your hand to graveyard, but if you summon it from the graveyard, banish it when it leaves the field, and if it's in your graveyard, you can equip it to a warrior you control. In for Noble Knight Olivier, while it's an equipped card, your opponent can't target the equipped monster with card effects you can only use each of its following effects once per turn. You can set a fire warrior monster and equip spell from your hand or face up field to the graveyard to special summon this from your hand as a level one. And if it's in your graveyard, you can target a warrior you control, equip it. And finally, in for Noble Knight, Ricardetto. You can banish this card from your hand to graveyard to special summon one level four or lower fire warrior monster from your hand as a tuner. And if it's normally special summoned, you can target a level four or lower fire warrior monster in your graveyard except himself, special summon it. And you can't special summon monsters for the rest of the turn except for warriors. Now this one has a hard once per turn, but also a one effect per turn restriction. After that, we've got some cards that aren't Noble Knights. We've got three copies of Neo Space Connector and one Neo Space and Aqua Dolphin, one God Phoenix Gearfreed, one Super Quantum Red Layer, and one Fire Flint Lady. For spells, we've got three Heritage of the Chalice, which allows you to add a Noble Knight monster or Noble Arms card from your deck to the graveyard to the hand. And if a Noble Knight monster equipped with a Noble Arms equipped spell is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can add this card to your hand. Three copies of Durandal, which while equipped to a monster, can add a level five or higher Fire Warrior monster from your deck to your hand, then destroy this card. If it's 
sent to the graveyard because the equipped monster is sent to the graveyard. You can target a level five or lower fire warrior monster in your graveyard, special summon it, and you can special summon monsters for the rest of the turn except warriors. That's a one effect per turn. Joyeuse, which, if equipped to a monster, can target a fire warrior monster in your graveyard, add it to your hand, then destroy this card, and if sent to the graveyard because the equipped monster is sent to the graveyard, you can special summon one fire warrior monster from your hand and look at all the French people in this museum. Ha ha ha. After that, we've got three copies of Noble Arms Museum. All fire warrior monsters you control gain 500 attack. Once per turn, you can pay 1200 life points out a Noble Arms card from your deck to your hand, except for a museum. Once per turn, if the previous effect was applied this turn, you can target a Noble Knight monster card in your spell and trap card zone, special summon it, and if you activated this effect when you didn't control Charles, you can't special summon monsters for the rest the turn except warriors finally one in for noble arms all moss while this card is equipped to a monster you can equip an in for noble arms equip spell from your deck or graveyard except itself to an appropriate monster you control destroy this card and if it's in the graveyard because you equipped monster is sent to the graveyard you can turn out a fire warrior monster that is banished in your graveyard add it to your hand again one effect per turn we've got a reinforcement of the army ddr divine sword phoenix blade triple book of eclipse three ash blossom three droll and three infinite impermanence in the extra We've got Baron de Fleur, Infernoble Knight, Emperor Charles. If an equip card becomes equipped to a monster on the field, even the damage step, you can destroy one card on the field. And during the end phase, you can equip an equip spell from your hand or graveyard to this card. Then equip a fire warrior monster from your deck to this card as an equip spell that gives it 500 attack. Ignoble Knight of High Lancelin. While this card is synchro summoned, you can add a noble arms equip spell card from your deck to this card. And at the end of the battle phase, if this card destroyed a monster by battle and sent it to the graveyard, you can add a noble knight or noble arms card from your deck to your hand. To Roland, if this card is synchro summoned, you can activate this effect. During the end phase, send an equip spell from your deck to the graveyard, then add a warrior monster from your deck to your your hand during the main phase if this card is in your graveyard you can target a warrior monster you control equip this card to that monster you control as an equip spell that gives it 500 attack two copies of angelica princess of noble arms if this card is special summoned you can add an horn of oliphant or a card that mentions charles from your deck to your hand and while in effect uh, is activated that targets this card in the field or when this card is targeted for an attack you can send a fire warrior monster from your deck to the graveyard banish this card until the end phase and special summon a roland from your deck or extra deck finally for xyz we've got zeus and dempsey and for links we've got apollosa two isold one ferocious flame swords and two, Emperor Charles the Great, which I will be calling Charlemagne. This can only be made with one level nine in for Noble Knight Charles, equipped with an equip card. If this card is linked summoned, you can target an Emperor Charles in your graveyard. Its name becomes that name. It gains that target's effects, then equip that target to this card as an equip spell that gives it 500 attack. And then once per turn, when a spell trap card or effect is activated, you can send an equip spell from your hand or face up field to the graveyard to negate the activation. And if you do, destroy the card in the side. We've got two Lightning Storm, a Harpy's Feather Duster, Triple Triple Attack, Dark Ruler No More, Evenly Matched, and Solemn Judgment. So with that, let's jump into the games. Our first match is up against Unchained, and this game showcases this deck's ability to now play through Droll and Lockbird. They said it could never be done, but it can be only with Ogier and, let's say, Rainout. We'll use Rainout to get this copy of Immortal Phoenix Gear Freed back to hand, and then make a copy of High Lancelin. We're going to equip it with a copy of Almas, then Almas to tag out for a Durandal, activate the effect of the GPG, get it to our side of the field, activate the Ogier, targeting the Gear Freed, and then activating the effect of the Durandal, adding a card from deck to hand, to which our opponent will activate Droll and Lockbird. Too bad, buddy, too bad. Afterwards, we're going to special summon this copy of Fire Flint and get off to the races. Let's go Isold. We'll use Isold's effect to grab from deck to hand a red layer, and then her second effect in order to send a Divine Sword Phoenix Blade to the graveyard for a Ricardetto. We'll go Ricardetto into a copy of Ogier, then make Angelica. Angelica will trigger here. We'll go ahead and get the museum. We'll set the museum. Then afterwards, we'll activate the museum, taking 12 so we can grab a Durandal from deck to hand. Next, we're going to go for the Phoenix Blade, equipping the Phoenix Blade onto the Angelica, which allows us to trigger her effect, banish her for a copy of Roland, and now we've got a big tuner on our side of the field. We'll add back the Phoenix Blade, activate the Phoenix Blade, targeting the Roland and then use Turpin in order to summon itself and Synchro Summon a Charles. We'll use the effect of the Roland in Graveyard. Now that that monster has been equipped, it's Charlemagne time. We'll equip with our copy of Emperor Charles and we'll activate Noble Arms Museum to summon it again, equip it with another spell so we can go into a second Charlemagne and equip this one with a Emperor Charles as well. At end phase, we're going to equip a ton of cards from our deck with the effects of our Charlemagnes. Our opponent's going to begin with a copy of Fiendish Rhino Warrior and wisely attempts to do all of this in the damage step. Here, able to send a copy of Sharvara and summon a copy of Abominable Unchained Soul at a time when we can't really respect it. They're going to pop our copy of Immortal Phoenix and get into the Angelica. We'll tag out for a copy of Roland, and then we'll trigger the effect of the Malgus in Graveyard in order to draw a card. They will walk over the Roland, which is rough. Then they'll go for Shiyama, targeting the back row. But unfortunately for them, our Charlemagne can negate the effect of spell and trap cards as well. We'll prevent the summon. They'll go for Sharvara, popping this Escape. They'll activate the effect of the Unscape. We will negate it. And then afterwards, we are able to clean up the remainder of the field. Here, we're going to go for Charlemagne effect in order to pop the Sharvara 
Mara, and then fire the Book of Eclipse so they can't link summon a Yama. At end phase, we're going to bring back this copy of Angelica. They're going to draw a couple of cards, but it is cold comfort into our established board. We'll normal summon this copy of Ogier. We'll activate the effect in order to send a Noble Arms Museum, then activate the Noble Arms Museum we already have. We'll get Joyeuse. We'll go for the Noble Arms Museum to summon out this copy of Olivier, and we'll go King Dempsey, the Battle and Boxer, making an appearance. We're going to grab from deck to hand a rain out. We'll special that rain out, activate the effect to get Immortal Phoenix Gear Freed. Then afterwards, we can go into an Apollosa, activate the effect of the Immortal Phoenix Gear Freed, and this should be all she wrote. We'll get in, and of course, we can take their copy of uh, Sharvara as we walk over Abominable Unchained. They go to zero. Our second match showcases what this deck is capable of doing going second. Our opponent is on Vanquished Soul, and they have drawn Raisin, so we are going to actually play Yu-Gi-Oh! here today. They're going to begin with a copy of Raisin. They'll activate the effect that'll grab from deck to hand a Mad Love, and we will Droll and Lockbird. They're going to stake our soul and go into a copy of Heavy Borgor, and then link off for Rock of the Vanquisher, activate the effect of the Rock, and pass. What a good deck. We draw for turn, and Double Neo Space Connector is not really where we want to be. We're going to go for the effect. They're going to rock in response, and they're going to heavy Borgor in response as well. That allows them to summon the Borgor, then special out this copy of Raisin, and then on a new chain, they can trigger the effect of both the Raisin and the heavy Borgor to draw a card and add a card from deck to hand. They're going to go ahead and grab this copy of Caesar as we go into Isolde. They're going to go Caesar Valius in order to tag itself onto the field. We will go for Isolde in order to grab a red layer, and then Isolde's effect for four here. Uh, they're going to activate Caesar Valius, but all it's going to do is prevent it from being affected by card effects. No big deal. This shouldn't matter. We're going to go Ogier here. Uh, we're going to dump a copy of Immortal Phoenix Gear Freed. Then we're going to go for Roto. We'll special summon this Reynoud and cycle back the Gear Freed. Afterwards, we will go into an Angelica. We'll activate the effect of the Angelica for a museum. Then we'll activate the effect of the Divine Sword Phoenix Blade and Graveyard. Activate Joyeuse, targeting the Isolde and then Immortal Phoenix Gear Freed. So we have an equip on our field at all times. We're going to go for the Phoenix Blade targeting the Angelica and tag out for a Roland, at which point we can activate the Graveyard Effect of Malgus as well. We're going to go for the Turpin once again, and that's going to enable us to synchro summon a copy of Charles. We'll go for the effect of Noble Arms Museum. They will rock, but yeah, that's why we kept Joyeuse on our side of the field. That Gear Freed will make quick work of that. We're going to go ahead and grab a copy of Almas, and we should just be able to wrap up from this position. We will go ahead and get that heavy Borgor off the field before making Emperor Charles the Great Charlemagne back to the field, and we will activate its effect to equip in for Noble Knight Emperor Charles, specialing it with the Noble Arms Museum, at which point our opponent will concede. So it's time for game three, and you know what that means, a best of three versus meta. Our opponent's playing Kash Tira, and look at this hand. Dimension Shifter, Dimension Shifter, Triple Tack, Fenrir, Riseheart. I, this is what every Cash Tira hand looks like, and it's the best deck in the format. People show up, register this list, and demand to be taken seriously. I just don't get it. Okay, draw phase Dimension Shifter. Summon Fenrir. We have Imperm for the Fenrir, but really, would it have mattered if we didn't? Okay, they're going to pass back to us, and, uh, well, we are in a Dimension Shifter, which is something at least. We're going to begin with a copy of Noble Arms Museum. We're going to activate the effect that's going to grab from deck to hand a copy of Durandal. We're going to activate the Durandal targeting the Fenrir, then activate the effect of the Durandal in order to grab from deck to hand a copy of Ogier. Let's get going. We'll go into Red Layer into Neospace Connector that will summon a Neospatian Aqua Dolphin. Fenrir here in order to get rid of the Red Layer, and then afterwards we can go Ricardetto in order to summon the Ogier. We'll summon the Rain out, then activate the out because guess what? It grabs from Banish. We'll overlay for a copy of King Dempsey here. King Dempsey is going to grab from deck to hand a copy of Ogier for next turn, and we'll make an ice hold for a GPG to contest our opponent's crackback. We'll go to the battle phase. We can at least end on a Zeus. We'll get in for 16, overlay for the big boy himself, and pass back to our opponent. They draw one of the best cards they possibly could off the top of the deck, Cash Tira Birth. They'll go Cash Tira Birth in order to summon back this copy of Fenrir. We'll fire off the Zeus, and because it's now the main phase, they can fire off this copy of Triple Tactics Talons, taking our Zeus and switching it to attack position and overlaying for Zeus. That's what, the, again, the best deck in the room. That's what it accomplishes. We'll go Ricardetto targeting Ogier. Afterwards, we'll activate Ogier. That's going to grab a copy of Joyeuse to the Graveyard and an Angelica to our side of the field. We'll grab another copy of Noble Arms Museum. We'll activate the effect taking another 12. Why not? To grab a Durandal. And then we'll activate Durandal targeting the Angelica. Angelica effect. She goes out for a Roland. And then afterwards, we'll activate Turpin targeting Roland. And last chance to look at me, Hector. Oh my god. Vibe check failed. We'll go for Immortal Phoenix Gear Free to equip it with an Ogier. We'll activate the effect of the Noble Arms Museum. You're too late. My GPG is already on board. And this should be all she wrote. So it's time for game two. And another banger hand from the best deck in the format. Double Droll and Lockbird. Oh my god. Okay, we're going first this time, which is a little frustrating. Uh, many of our hands can play through Droll, as you saw in game one. But this one cannot. We're going to walk into Droll, but we can still get a lot accomplished here. We're going to go Connector for a copy of Aqua Dolphin. We're going to activate the Aqua Dolphin pitching an Ash. Unfortunately, all we get for our trouble is a Droll. But we also get information, which is important. We'll go Isolde here for four. We're going to grab a copy of Ogier. We're going to activate the effect of the Ogier and set a copy of GPG. 
then we're going to go right now target this copy of DDR. We'll synchro summon a copy of Angelica and bring back this Divine Sword Phoenix Blade, targeting the Angelica who we will activate in order to tag out for a Roland. From here, we can go ahead and make Charles before activating the graveyard effect. Turpin will bring it to our spell and trap card zone, and then make Charles the Great using its effect to summon this copy of Infernoble Knight Emperor Charles, summoning back the gear freed by pitching the Divine Sword Phoenix Blade, going to the end phase, bringing back Angelica, setting Solomon passing. Our opponent's going to begin with a copy of the Prime Planet. They're going to go for Kashtira Unicorn. We'll negate with Immortal Phoenix Gear Freed. We know about the Fenrir. They're going to activate the Fenrir effect in order to grab a copy of Scare Cash. They're going to activate Theosis. We will negate it using the effect of our Charles the Great, and then we will Roland back. Afterwards, we're going to go for Fenrir targeting Charles the Great, but we'll chain Charles the Great, and goodbye to the Fenrir. They're going to go for a Pot of Prosperity. Uh, that's probably worth a solemn judgment, and thankfully, that's all she wrote. They can summon out this copy of Scare Cash, but they can't contest the GPG on field. They will walk into this Angelica, which negates its effects and does allow them to get over it, uh, but it's just a hop, skip, and a jump to lethal from this position, and they'll concede. So we're back with the deck, and wow, that looked competent. Let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. One, the new Charles provides the deck with even more combo power in Archetype, and Angelica and Ricardetto provide new combo routes that give the deck ways to play through hand traps and search specific pieces easier. Two, the deck has a lot of space for non-engine, allowing it not only to be a heavy combo deck, but also back that up with hand traps and board breakers. And three, the deck has both recovery and follow-up through Noble Arms Museum and the Charles Effect, giving you turn three plays even if your board is broken. And the cons. One, the deck without explicitly teching into weaker cards is still weak to Dark Ruler. It doesn't really have an in-archetypal counter trap, instead it would have to rely on something like Flamvel Counter, which I'm not above. Two, Droll is less of a problem, but multiple well-placed hand traps and an early Nibiru on a weaker hand can make you waste a lot of resources to end on nothing. And three, the deck has to rely on non-engine heavily to be able to play through most current meta boards. Overall, these knights have made a big comeback from their Auroradon days, and look like a solid choice for the upcoming format. Thanks so much for watching. A huge shouts out to all my patrons, but specifically, Elena Tincher, Alex Perea, Allison Elliott, Averant, Bacon for Hire, Brett Henry, Canor, Christian Malone, De Bears, Darkmaster Zork, Derp and Dragon, DJ Elephant, Executive Slifer, John Piet, Jordan Kuntz, King Magic Ruler, Night Mary, Legal Rights, Lockstone, Luis Hernandez, Matthew M. DeRezzo, MBT Play Madolce, Melfi Stan, Mike Carlotti, Puffins of Doom, Rose Lapine, Solar Flare the Ricka Queen, Troy Says Buy Erasure is Gay, Vincent Storm, Who's Nick, Wonder Waffle, and Your Socks Are Moist Again. Couldn't have done it without you.